this video, I'm going to crush the beginner chess bots. You will learn the most basic chess principles and the most important strategy to bring your rating to a thousand elo. Little bonus, I will tell you what is the most effective way to train chess. Are the bots part of it? Let's get started with Martin. This guy plays the most horrible chess of all time. Okay, e45, this is very normal in the beginning, at the beginning of the game, you have to Take a pawn and control the central square. Those are the center. Every single piece is stronger at the center than at the side of the board. Now we go out with the knight and we are already attacking the pawn. Make sure to know the value of the pieces. And let's go immediately to a second rule. What should I do? When you don't know what to do, you shouldn't copy your opponent because you might end up in big trouble. Now I'm going to take here. And is Martin going to copy me? Okay, this is a big problem because now... I go with the queen here, I'm attacking the knight, okay, the pawn is protecting, but what if I attack it with the pawn? When you're attacking a piece with a, oh my god, when you're attacking a piece with another piece of less value, your opponent is kind of forced to move it away. And now remember, this trap, you are going to give a discovery check, and so with the knight you have to give the most, the biggest pain possible, so you go here, you're giving a check with the queen, and with the knight you're attacking the queen. And after six moves, you won a queen. And now well, let's try to end this game as quickly as possible. We gotta bring the pieces to give towards this king to try to give checkmate. When you are um, when you're an, adv an advantage, you have two strategies to win the game. One, you give checkmate because you have more pieces to attack. Two, you just trade pieces and you get to an endgame. So it will be easier to convert it. Now, one thing that already we have to say about the bots is that they play like completely ridiculous moves. Who, who would play rook g8 here? It's like makes no sense whatsoever. Instead, if we human, we put some sense behind every single move. Now, I'm going to take a pawn because this is free. And here, also another terrible move. You should try to develop your pieces as quickly as possible. I will play g3 just because it seems like a good way to bring out this bishop on fianchetto. Let's go with the bishop out. I could go with castle. This is... Um, okay, the knight is under attack, so I will not do that. Where to move the knight? Let's go here. Let's try to trade a pair of knights. Let's see what Martin does. Martin doesn't want to trade, but now this is a good move. That's why I find it strange. Usually humans, we play either mostly bad or mostly good so we played mo all the moves at a one certain level instead this computer i have a mixture of good moves and bad moves this is a good move not trading pieces and also attacking the queen and the spawn at the same time it's definitely not a martin move i'm now attacking this knight i want to kick it back um i mean who is not moving the knights away i think like there is a very common problem that is tunnel vision that when you start playing chess, it's very hard to see attacks from far away. For example, it might be much easier to blunder a piece that is attacked by this bishop because it's like far away. Instead, to see a pawn that is attacking very closely should be easier. By the way, a general rule, every time your opponent plays a move, shortly ask yourself, what are they threatening? What is their idea? Because like this, you understand that this pawn wants to take this knight. And now again, what is this pawn? Okay, I, they took a piece, but now we are also taking... This pawn is a hero, by the way. We're also taking a bishop. We are also attacking this pawn. And there we go. We go all in. Now we need to castle to put the king to security. And we do it just in case. But now we just gotta find a checkmate. We go with the knight here. The king is already running out of square. In order to find a, a checkmate in a very simple way, you always need to consider, okay, where can the king go? Okay, the king cannot go here. The king cannot go here. So it's actually enough a check. If the queen would be here, this would be checkmate. So how to bring the queen there? Not so easy. Let's bring the bishop here and maybe we want to take there, which would be close to be checkmate. Okay, we take here. Now attention, what to play. Rook there is a good move. And now I'm not going to take immediately because remember, this is a piece that is pinned. And once the piece is pinned, cannot move away. So you are not in a hurry. I'm going to bring first the queen. And now I'm going to, to take there. But this is going to be mate. Now we take and check mate. The king cannot go anywhere. And it's a check. That's GG's. For the next bot, we play against Elani with the black pieces. 
uh, chess is just too fun. I'm very happy that you see this way, but it would be much funnier if you play as first move e4, not the London system, but e4. Uh, because you can go out with the queen, with the bishop, with the knight, you're ready to develop all your pieces. Now, I will go with the movie 5, so I'm ready to develop my pieces really quickly, and I'm happy that you go with a second pawn at the center of the board. Now, one very simple idea, once your opponent is attacking a piece of same value, because it's a pawn in exchange of a pawn, you have basically three possibilities. Either you trade, or you protect it. Now, I think that if we protect it with the knight, my opponent could push, attacking with a pawn, one point, a piece of with three points. So we have to move the knight again. We don't want this, so we just take. And after pawn takes, I, I assume that the pawn should take because the queen doesn't want to go out too early. Now we go for the center. It's really important to control the center with at least one pawn in the open. And then you're ready to develop first the knight, then the other knight, and then the bishops, and then castle. Queen out too early is a mistake. Remember that because you want to go here in the square with the knight. Sorry, with the bishop. And now the knight is on the side of the board, which is also another mistake. You want to move your pieces towards the center. I know this looks like a fancy move, but this knight is not going uh, to be very active here. Because a knight here is controlling, is looking at four squares. Those four. Instead, if the knight is here, let's make a different color, is controlling, okay, let's let's say like this, it's controlling this square, 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 it's eight squares. Okay, not this one. <laughs> so a knight in the center has eight squares, a knight on the, on the corner is just having two squares. So be careful with the knights. We go with the bishop out and then we are going to castle. There we go. Now I'm already very, very... Uh, confused by this move uh, because you now I think Elani realized that the queen is controlling a square where you want to go with the bishop so that you can castle but what she did she went up and down is like if, we, if she took two moves and she throw them in the bin not good not a good idea okay now she wants to develop in fianchetto but let's see guys tunnel vision does it work we're attacking a knight she says I see exactly what you are doing so Elani sees the attack. Okay, that's good. The knight has been moved. Remember, ask yourself, what is the plan of my opponent? What do they want to do? Let's say if you see another, my, my other threat. Wow. So they see the threat because now I was threatening to take here. Let's bring a rook there. A rook that is looking towards the king. Now we could already consider taking there, but I will improve my position. Go forward with your pieces. When you go forward with your pieces, you are going to attack them. Now, I could take there, which is very nice. I'm trading a piece, a bishop for a knight, which usually the bishops are stronger in open positions because they are so fast to move around from one side of the board to the other. Instead, the knight is slower, you know? Uh, it doesn't move so fast. For example, a knight here to get to the other side of the board I mean, it has to move so many times. Of course, it's not even relevant to move to the other side of the board, but it's just an example. Now, how to move on? A very general idea is every time you're playing a chess game and you have all your pieces out, you castled, you need to have a plan. A very basic, a simple plan that you can apply in every single position is the following. Make the most out of every single piece. In this position, what is the worst piece for black? Is this rook here. It's not playing at all. So we want to try to activate it, and we do a rook here, and then we bring the other rook there, so we double the rooks. Now shortly ask, what is the plan of my opponent? They're attacking a queen, so we can just push this pawn, so we are attacking with a pawn, one, a bishop, three, and the bishop has to move again. And now we follow our plan, because this move is not attacking anything, and we are attacking a pawn, just protected by the queen. Now a very simple idea is to be able to count the attackers and the defenders. There is this pawn. This pawn is attacked one and two times. It's protected just one time. So we can successfully win the pawn. And we go with the rook. She says that uh, I might think she's losing, but it's actually a trap. We'll see that. So I just won a pawn. It's not a big deal. Now this bishop cannot be captured because it's protected by the rook. We could consider taking here. And I like it. I like it. We take this knight away. You know why? Because now this pawn has to take and this king is suddenly very weak on this file. I will go with the bishop here. I'm attacking the rook. 
And now there is a very typical checkmate. Mm. My opponent is just going with a the knight there. This is not a good move, my lady. Now I can just take the rook because a rook has a value of 5, the bishop has a value of 3. And now an amazing tactic. We go with the rook here. The rook is protected by the other rook. And we're attacking at the same time the queen that cannot be moved because there is the king behind. So we won the queen. And now we just have to bring all the pieces and give mate. There is a free pawn. We are also bringing the knight towards the attack. So we do this. We go here. We give a nice fork. When you attack with the knight or with a pawn, two pieces of higher value, you are doing a fork. I think Alani has a blind spot for the rooks. She played a good game at the beginning, but then terrible. Let's bring the queen not here because the bishop is controlling. So let's bring it closer to the king. Let's go here. One thing that I could suggest uh, to train is just at the beginning though, before leaving the piece, shortly check, is it hanging? Just look the pieces around and double check. This is something that can help you to avoid blunders. Now, what is the idea of my opponent? You're attacking the queen, but is this piece hanging? Yeah, this piece is not protected, so you can just take it. Now you're giving a check. Now you bring the rook to give... Oh, it's checkmate, guys. Let's go. Let's play against Noel. This bot was born on Christmas and likes to accept presents from your, the opponent. But you will receive no presents from me, just to make sure. And I think he said, don't laugh about my opening. It's a terrible opening. This is called a wear defense. You don't go with the pieces out. You might regret it really soon. Once you, If your opponent is playing very bad moves, you keep doing good moves, okay? That's don't try to copy to be fancy, no. If they don't control the center, you always want to go with the two pawns next to each other in the center. Like this, you're controlling all the squares in the center. And then you start to develop. First the knight, then the bishop, then the other knight, then the other bishop. This is absolutely disgusting, for real. I will go with the bishop out and I'm already attacking. Hoi boy, what is this? I can even think about sacrificing there. For real, this is the worst opening I've ever seen. <laughs> I want to go already for the attack. I'm attacking this pawn and I don't think that it... What? 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 This is how you don't play chess, for real. Noel was the worst, even worse than Martin. Let's play a new bot at the same level because I think this 550 of Noel was really not deserved. Let's play e4. Okay, you play the Scandinavian, which I don't like this opening for beginners when you start playing chess. No, I think you can play just if you are an advanced chess player because the queen is out too early. And what to do when the queen goes out too early? You have to attack it with minor pieces. Winning a tempo because now I'm developing a piece. The queen has to move one more time and then I'm able to develop one more piece. So I develop two knights and my opponent has done nothing. So it's a successful opening. I will go with the bishop out here, attacking the pawn on f7. One thing that is very important saying, f7 is the most vulnerable point for, for black and f2 for white. So it's very good to attack it with the pieces. That's why the fried lever, and I mean, I will try this again. I will try, I'm attacking f7. Oh my god, I can't believe. This is exactly the same. f7 is very vulnerable because this pawn is just protected by the king. So there are so many openings like the scholar mate that are attacking that pawn and sometimes you just win. Okay guys, you know what? Let's try the same or similar against Milika. Because if they have a blind spot for f7, okay, she plays a very good uh, move. So it shouldn't be a problem. Let's play bishop here. Let's see what she plays against. Okay, and she goes with the knight there. So we will now just develop the pieces. Go out with the knight, go out with the bishop. So Milika will put a much better fight because she is playing well sound moves until this point. Because now moving again the same piece in the opening is not good. Your, the bishop was doing so much so well here. So you don't have to move it again one more time. Either you go directly here, which is also fine, or it stays there and you develop another piece. You have to be very greedy with development. You have to try to bring out as many pieces as possible. Like when you were a kid and you wanted to play with all the toys at the same time. Your mom was saying, keep the toys one at a time, keep them in the box, don't throw them all out at the same moment. You take the box and you throw all the toys out. That's what you have to do on the chessboard. Now, let's play the move d6 because I want to go with the bishop here. 
Uh, this bishop here is very powerful. We are pinning the knight. This knight cannot be moved. You know, it's very good to simply castle. I love the, the following move. This knight is pinned. I won so many games when I was a kid because of this idea. So you can play knight there. Because now the knight cannot take. Because the queen is hanging. And the nice part here is that if the king castles, the king will be very weak because we are going to take there. Now, the bishop has been moved. I will play c3 and I will play the move d4 because when the king is at the middle of the board, you want to open up the center. This is a great idea. And Milika just blundered a piece that now we are going to take. I love seeing pieces get captured. Well, you should love seeing pieces of your opponent get captured, not your own pieces. Now, this rook here is not doing much. I think we could keep taking. Let's see if Milika takes back. Okay, she takes back. And now we have an extra piece. We want to go with the queen here. Maybe we try to exploit the... Oh, this move is terrible. We're going to have a, such a fun mate, guys. Okay, there is a free piece. Milika finally blundered it. And now where is the king going? The king goes there. Discovery check. We take... The rook we are attacking the queen and a different and a very important difference between the bots and human is that human resign usually uh, they would a human would resign in this position now we are inside collecting all the pawns so you can use bots to train the checkmate so to train your conversion how to convert a chess game because usually you don't have much chances against beginners because they just resign when they realize, oh, I'm completely lost. And now, guys, I think we have it. We give a check here. Okay, but now the king gets this square. So once we take, the king can still go there. But now, how do we give mate? I see a very nice idea. This bishop is pinned. So we go with the bishop here and we're going to take here next. If the king moves, we take here. The king moves and now the kiss of death. Checkmate. Let's play Janjai. She goes out with the knight, which is the ready opening because she likes this opening. I think this is a good opening because with the knight you're controlling very important central square, so it's okay. I will go with a pawn in the center of the board because I want to be very uh, just basic and very simple. Then we cannot push the second pawn in the center because when you can, you do it because the knight is controlling the square. So we just go out with the knight and then we will go out with the other knight. Very simple chess, you know? One pawn in the center, then you bring your knights out, and now the bishop here pinning this pawn. Sorry, this uh, knight. The bishop has been moved one more time. You know that this is a mistake. Sometimes you cannot exploit it immediately. But now we have a nice move. We can play e4. We can go with the two pawns in the center of the board, because the knight cannot take, because there is a queen hanging, and the knight even moved backward. That's why, guys, I say, I believe that training bots have some plus, but lots of minus because no no player will play this move. Nobody will blunder the queen like this. At 700 elo is already an experienced player. Will not do that. Now we will just push. I want to open up the files. Another free piece. I mean, this is uh, so much gifts. I'll take here. I'll take everything I can. And okay, we go with the knight forward. Now you have to be very careful, Miss Janjai. I'll bring the queen here and I'll try to castle. So I bring also the rook to the party. You're attacking the queen, but I will not let you take it. I will go to force this check. Remember, when you're looking for a checkmate, make sure to shortly consider where the king can go. The king cannot go here, cannot go here, cannot take there. So a check on this diagonal would be good. But after check here, there is pawn there or bishop here, so it's not too effective. That's why I'm just castling. Another, another idea to give checkmate would be with the knight here. But the knight can take, so we cannot do that. Now I can promote, because after rook takes, I'm just taking gear. And I know that that was a queen, but that was a pawn. So it's like if we have been trading a pawn for a rook, and this is already checkmate. Let's play one more game with Aron that has the same rating of Genjai. Uh, maybe I already forgot the name. <laughs> An open game. Uh, sound should be fun. So e4, e5 and bishop here. So now this bishop is a little bit strange. We just developed the knight there because usually you really like to go. Wow. How did you get that idea? I mean, I would ask you that question. Usually you don't play such moves in the opening because it makes really few sense. There is already a pawn hanging here. But you know what? I will first attack this 
pawn, I really recommend you to exploit the weakness of the f2 pawn. Now I'm taking here and I'm threatening to take there. That's absolutely ridiculous. You don't. I think like the nice part of these bots is that they do very basic mistakes, you know? Now I'm going to take a rook. I gave a fork. I was attacking the queen and the rook at the same time. And so you can learn some things, but it's also very good psychologically because we have what is this queen doing? Attacking this bishop so we protect. Because psychologically you're not playing a human and you're not scared to for ego reasons and things like that. You're not scared of losing too much against the bot. You just you just want to learn. But at some point, guys, if you really want to improve, I really suggest to maybe get get started with the with a bot. Like this, you you accept that losing is part of the game. And and then you when you want to really train and get better, you play against humans. So now I was attacking the screen quite some times. The queen was moving all the time. This bishop is now hanging. So I just bring the bishop back. And now in this position we have an extra rook and a few extra pawns. But we still need to activate the pieces. We don't win the game just like this. We just need to bring out all the pieces. Now this king is already running out of square. I see an idea of checkmate which implies the knight to go there and then to take this pawn. The king. Ooh, okay, so look at this. The bishop is controlling the square. This other bishop is going to control the square. So this is checkmate with a knight. With a bishop and with another bishop. Now we are going to face the strongest beginner bot. Zara, hello, let's enjoy a game. She goes out with the knight. Every time, go with a pawn and control the center. And there we go. Okay, now we develop a knight. So this is now... No. No human will play you this move. That's why you train something when you play against bots. But you don't really play a real chess game. Because... Nobody plays knight back. Now I'm taking a pawn because it's free. And then I will go with the bishop here. I'm threatening checkmate. Oh my god. Why are all the bots falling for this trap? And which is not even a trap. Because it's just a good move. And they are not protecting the mate. This is absolutely crazy. Santiago, please do better. Okay, d4, we play d5. We go with a pawn in the center of the board. And now... We could take here, we could push. I recommend you to protect it, to protect this pawn just with another pawn. So after take, you can take back. Now we just develop this knight and then we will develop also the bishops. There is a bishop attacking here. So we can just develop the bishop here. So we are protecting and we are not pinned. Now we are going to castle because it's very normal. And then we have to develop those pieces. How to do that? Let's do it. Let's go with the knight here. And then I will show you a very fun way to develop this bishop. Remember, now this bishop has been moving already once. So you take here and this bishop has to move again. And now you play a6 followed by b5. This bishop has to move again. Every time you're attacking with a piece of less value, a piece of higher value, you're winning a tempo. And now finally all the pieces are developed. This is a very simple system to play against 1d4. All the pieces are developed. Let's attack the center. Let's play the move c5. We are attacking the center one more time. Santiago is playing a very good game up to this point. Going with two pawns in the center of the board. Going for the center. He moved the bishop one time, a second time. But he wants to go with the queen here. And maybe try to give checkmate there. So a very good player. Now let's take this pawn. He's taking back with the queen. Let's play the move h6. Honestly, Santiago is really playing well. I really hope that he's not plundering a piece any soon. Already this could be a fork. Attacking two pieces, but after knight takes, we are just losing a pawn. So let's bring the rook to the party. And now the rook is attacking. Well, he's not attacking much. But we would like to put the second rook here. But there is the queen. So we have to move the queen where do we go? I have a plan. I want to play first bishop here. Anyway, we, no, we have no, no longer the problem of the pin. And then we go with the queen here. We are also attacking the most vulnerable point. And now already Santiago is starting to go crazy. This h4? No sense. I will bring the rook here. Looking at the queen. And now the knight is going backward. But this means that we are leaving a pawn hanging. Every time the, the knights, those two knights are moving away. Remember that they are leaving either this square or this square unprotected. So always look for this square. And now we are attacking this pawn. 
twice with the bishop and the knight and there is just one piece protected protecting so we can take we're also attacking this pawn actually that is also unprotected so we will take here because we are also giving a check the king is also getting weak and now we take here with the bishop because i want to take back with the knight okay anyway santiago is moving the knight every time ask yourself what is this what is changing once this knight is here and if you see well this bishop is no longer protected because the queen the knight is interfering between the bishop and the queen so you have to do something a very simple move is to take here and we do it because we want to play simple chess now santayo takes back with the knight and i see a nice tactic the fork there is a very satisfying tactic in chess when a pawn is just looking at two pieces like this because your opponent has to move one of them and you take the other one and now we've won a piece the bishop is attacking the queen so we move it and we move it towards this king that is running uh, out of squares and is in big danger so we move it here now let's see if, Santa if santiago sees a discovery attack we move this knight here and we are attacking the queen santiago sees it but is now giving a queen away for two rooks which is usually a good trade you can do that now i have to move the king here but in this case it's not too good i'm now taking here because this king is very weak and the queen is a monster once the king is weak now we give a check and we are already giving a double attack we take the rook now let's try to find a quick checkmate let's go with the queen again giving a check and then we have to bring the knights let's go with the knight here now a checkmate this would be checkmate so we give a check if the king goes here it's mate if the king goes there we give a check here the king has just one square and now it's bing bong and bong conclusion is playing against bot good to improve your chess i believe it's much better to play against human because they play human moves not weird moves like the bot but it can be very good if you want to just get started uh destroy the fear of losing because losing is just part of learning so happy losing happy learning uh like this video if you enjoyed this game there is lots of learning and subscribe to the channel so you will not miss the next videos thank you so much guys for watching See you next time. Ciao.